big picture, this is what's going on. We're getting telemetry data that helps me understand the operation of my systems that I have. I'm going to get insights as to what's going on, and then I'll be able to apply some type of understanding, this visibility to see you know, what's happening. Drill downs, if you will, is the terminology we used to use, some way to isolate and get the necessary information to hopefully take some corrective action. And then the greatest business value is when I have some type of analytics to be able to transform all of this information, these insights into some real actions. Now, certainly those of us who have been in the industry a long time understand I need, I need data to operate on, to, I need measurement information to be able to manage something. That's certainly provided, but now I want to move beyond that and do more analytics to have things where I can describe what actions should be taken. So that's why this uh, whole telemetry spectrum is feeding in a real advance in technology for managing environment, protecting, uh, providing availability, everything for, for information. And that's really the key point here. So when you're speaking in kind of generalities, is, 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 tele is telemetry for storage something you're seeing as a trend in the industry? Yeah, that's a, a good question because it's, it's not just for storage. We're seeing it from server systems and some, some, from some applications. But the adoption or the interest primarily comes initially from storage because making the information available for processing everything has, has the most dramatic value. And it's the one where people have had interruptions in the past. They say, I've got to make sure my data is always there, always available because for almost every environment we're in, that data or information is the most valuable thing they have. It's an asset and making that available to process is a big deal. Okay, so this isn't something that's storage specific. It applies to everything, but there are elements that can be applied directly to storage. Correct, absolutely right. And uh, we've seen the actual vendors that produce things for you know, storage and managing storage and everything actually take the lead here more so than other organizations. Good to hear. <laughs> All right, so we can move on here and let's talk a little bit about this uh, ability for scaling the management. One of the things that we run into and, and still goes along with John's earlier statement about finding the right people is the growth of information and the growth of uh, the amount of uh, infrastructure required to support it is a big deal and how can you grow if you can't really manage it effectively it becomes a business inhibitor and certainly that's the last thing you want to be is from an IT perspective slowing down the opportunity for business just because you don't have the right people or have enough people and so that's where we move into saying that this analysis then can break that bottleneck if you will and no longer be the excuse that we can't do something so the idea is now we can take that information and make decisions, automate these resp responses and move forward very quickly. This is where the hybrid cloud automation starts to come into play. Not only the on-prem, but working in the public cloud and say, these are the actions I need to take if this happens. Now there are manual processes where you can monitor things and that's great. That's what most of us are familiar with, but now we're getting more to the analytics turning into uh, automated operations. And this is where this uh, concept of AI ops or artificial intelligence for, oper for IT operations is coming into play. So AI ops fundamentally depends upon this telemetry data and then analytics on the data to make more intelligent operations. By doing that, I have less task that the, the specialists have to do and they can then effectively automate a lot of this functionality. Now unfortunately the AI ops and automation are somewhat in conflict in that you're getting a lot of messaging about automation where that may be things where you pre-can some scripts and do things working with some other tools and uh, I find that most of our IT organizations are somewhat hesitant about that because that requires more development, more support. So the idea of this type of AI ops is where the 
these things are done for the customer and they don't have to programmatically do things. Much more valuable to them, much more easier to introduce into their environments. Now, one of the other things, and this is a matter of scale, and we certainly see this in the environments that have both a large footprint in, in public clouds and on premises, is they look at, say, from the standpoint that I really can't handle all of this growth and this dissemination of information across these different environments. So there are companies now offering managed services for these customers. Certainly you'll see it from some of the vendors that support their products, and that's fabulous because they are the experts on the product. But the idea is that they're going to provide a much greater uh, white glove treatment, if you will, of their systems, regardless of where it's at. So now all of a sudden you can get the best management and resiliency, everything to do with that platform from them. This is very valuable. Uh, this certainly does alleviate some of the personnel requirements you have and the limited skill sets, et cetera. That's quite different. And this hard-earned hard knowledge, uh, and I typically talk, talk to about this, is that you have some stars here. These are the people that um, are really almost artists in managing information. It's difficult to obtain. It comes at a, a price for time, and only a few people really focus on doing that. It's hard to keep those people, and they're, they're rare. And so using some of these um, globally managed services help address those as well.